Um, AgriV as an investor has been active in the flower sector for some time already. Uh, the flower sector is an interesting one in East Africa. Uh, it has become quite a sophisticated and a sizable sector. It already supplies uh, more than 30% of the cut flower uh, production being marketed into Europe. Uh, so we've seen the growth and development, but we've also seen certain strategic trends uh, in the industry, not only in Africa, but also uh, in other emerging markets, such as in South America. And those trends are particularly around consolidation, uh, both horizontally and vertically. And uh, together with our partners and with Norfund as a co-investor, we saw an opportunity uh, to do just that here in East Africa by bringing together a number of um, producers in the summer flower category, both in Kenya and Ethiopia, doing horizontal consolidation in that way, uh, but also bringing in an element of vertical integration by acquiring a marketing sales and distribution capability uh, into the international markets. And that is to support a, another strategic trend in the industry towards more direct uh, sales and marketing strategies rather than being totally dependent on the traditional auction markets in Europe. Uh, so for us, it's a very interesting and exciting uh, transaction with trusted partners in the margin power group uh, that we are partnering with. And we think this company has a great future ahead of it as a group uh, and very proud of being able to partner them together with uh, Norfund. Right now, of course, you, you have been uh, at the forefront of championing, uh, speaking about the potential for equity investment and, of course, equity investment in innovation. Now, coming uh, to a level playing field where you have uh, you and, and, of course, North Fund, how should we see you uh, at least go half and half in regards to innovation or strategy development? How does that work? Uh, well, George, it's an interesting question. So, North Fund... Uh is a long-standing institutional investor also in emerging markets such as uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And Orfund also happens to be a investor in the AgriV funds, both in Fund 1 and Fund 2 uh, that has been recently launched. And uh, we have a proactive policy of creating opportunities for our fund investors to also co-invest uh, where they uh, demonstrate interest and where there's scope for co-investment in terms of the governance structures of our fund. So it is really a coming together of uh, uh, two partners uh, in the food and agri sector of, uh, of Sub-Saharan Africa, in this case East Africa, and for us a very good um, combination uh, in this instance of like-minded investors. Right now, whenever we see um, investments of such capacity, we automatically think new markets. And one of the markets, because we know margin power as well has a hand in Africa, uh, is, could potentially be Rwanda. We have companies here that export maybe even 90 to 100% of their flower produce uh, to Holland, uh, for example. So what will that be? What will that entail for you to just uh, get into others uh, relatively smaller, revenue might be a, a little less, and try to play around with your numbers? Uh, so, George, the, as I said, the traditional route to market, and it's still a prevailing route to market, is through the centralized auction platform in Holland, as far as the European market is concerned, and also many other international markets being served through that um, sales and uh, logistical platform of the auction market in, in Holland. As we said earlier, there is a, a increasing trend, uh, such as also happened in earlier years in the horticultural industry, of the routes to market becoming more direct, uh, direct between producers and retail and flower chains, not just in Europe, but also in Japan, in China, Australia, and North America, which are all regions to which this group uh, is already uh, selling and marketing to. And uh, this combination of companies in, into a single group being the margin power group, now give this group more muscle, both in terms of production capacity but also in terms of reach and presence uh, in the forward uh, routes to market um, to expand, uh, in particular, the penetration in the direct uh, routes to market, where a digital element uh, is also starting to play an increasing, uh, an increasing role uh, in the overall routes to market uh, scenario. 
Right now, the last time we spoke, uh, of course, we were talking about perishables, but there was the conversation about the private sector trying to rebirth the overall infrastructure. Maybe you could touch on us, whether, uh, to, you could help explain to us whether we have any commonalities between that and what we're doing now, and whether we should uh, be on the lookout for any risks in the value chain. So in the case of, of the flower sector, the flower industry as a prominent subsector in the agri uh, business setup in sub sahara and in East Africa, this particular investment uh, enables both ac acquisitions as part of the growth strategy of the Margin Power Group, but it also enables organic growth. And part of that organic growth is around building infrastructure uh, for this business and in the value chain uh, that it is part of uh, in terms of um, uh, that components of infrastructure which the flower business builds on uh, in terms of local uh, packing. Uh, it also creates the opportunity through the scale that the transaction now creates. It creates the opportunity to in future embark on more value adding right here in East Africa, uh, for instance, through the manufacturing of final bouquets rather than simply exporting flower stems to other regions to be put into bouquets there, the opportunity now arises to start looking at production of complete bouquets, doing that value adding, capturing the margin locally uh, before uh, sending to the international uh, market. So I think in that way, uh, this investment is also enabling innovation, but also enabling local production infrastructure uh, to be strengthened and enhanced.